Lee and I am a chair yoga teacher with Small World Yoga. It's nice to be here today. We're going to practice for 30 minutes and do a gentle, easy yoga in the chair. We may get up, we may not, depending on our time, but let's just be in the space together and let's just talk about for a minute what chair yoga is objectively going to do for us. It's going to increase our flexibility, it's going to give us a little more strength, it's going to relieve a little bit of stress, it's going to make us feel happy and joyful. On that note, I wanted to read a little segment about gratitude because when we come to the chair and we come to the yoga space, this is for us and this is for ourselves and it's to give ourselves a little bit of love and gratitude. So this book is how to add more goodness to your gladness. Gratitude isn't just something you have, it's something you learn and develop. It's a life skill. You can grow your capacity for gratefulness. You can cultivate your ability to pause, to look around, to be surprised and delighted by the world around you. When you slow down, you can better honor and feel the gift of each moment and the opportunity that comes with it. So for this time together, Please give yourself the opportunity to be grateful for your body and the expression and the flow. And just be present, which means we can now sit in our chair, feel the bottom of your bottom, maybe rock it back and forth, and then feel the feet on the mat. You can have bare feet. And please remember to modify. If there's something that feels like it's too much, or I go going a little too far, be aware of that and then modify it to your best ability. There should flow is about smoothness in your breath and how we connect that, but please don't feel any pain. We're trying to lengthen and strengthen our muscles and we work on our core to get stability, but core does not equal sore. So we don't want to have any soreness, we want to have comfort flexibility, and then feeling the movement. So if the chair is too high for you that you're sitting on, you may use a block because we always want a block and a strap for our classes. It's very helpful as a tool and an assist. And you can put your feet on the block or you can put your feet straight on the mat. So I prefer straight on the mat. We will use the block later. And just notice how your body feels in the chair. If you're comfortable, bring your eyelashes to touch which results in your eyes closing gently. Never push anything, just feel it. And that gives you a stronger sensation inside your body. If your eyes are closed, you lose the sensation of vision. So therefore, it heightens all the other senses. And then feel your body where your feet are on the ground and your legs and your knees and your hips are perpendicular. So they're forming right angles. I'm going to talk you through a lot of this, so just listen and respond as you need to. And notice the four corners of your feet, the little pinky side, the toes, the big toes, the inner heel, the outer heel. And notice that your feet are touching the floor. Then work your way up your legs, the lower half, the front shins, the back calves. Notice your knees. And notice your thighs on top and you rest your hands on your thighs with your palms down to ground yourself or if you prefer hands up to receive energy if you need a little extra energy open up those palms and receive it from all around you energetically notice your torso is long and tall the front part of your torso is your heart your stomach your belly your pelvis, and then just notice behind your torso in the back part is your spine, your tailbone, the back of your neck, the tip top of your spine is where your skull sits on your neck. Notice the back of your head. Notice your shoulders. Notice your upper arms. Let your elbows just straight down to your side body. Following with your lower arms resting on. So this is a very relaxed but an active position. And then notice your breath. The breath is a tool and breathing is your action. 
So as we breathe through class, try to regulate your self-regulation of breathing in and breathing out. But notice that you have your breath to regulate your movement because with your breath, you can control how tight or how relaxed your movement can be and it can work together in synchronicity in order to make beautiful movement and beautiful feeling in your body. So with that in mind, open your eyes gently and just be with yourself and notice your breath. As you inhale, you fill up. And as you exhale, you release. And notice the release as though you have a little string between your belly and your spine. So every time you inhale, you're trying to lengthen and fill up like a balloon. Think of your favorite color balloon. Exhale, let out the stale air, which you don't need anymore, but also contract your belly to your spine so that you're actively using your muscles. So that's just the ongoing breathing throughout the class. Inhale through your nose, exhale either through your nose or your mouth, whichever you're comfortable. Inhaling through your nose will filter the air that comes into your body, and then exhaling through your mouth or your nose will just let the stale air go. So just continue that process as though it's a cycle, over and over and over. And your breath is the most important part of our practice. Without that, that's it. So let's just be with the breath for two more times of noticing and balancing it out. Notice if it's light or heavy. Notice if it's tight or loose. So take your chin to your chest as you bow your chin forward with the back of your neck stretching and then bring your chin back up to shoulder height and then bow it forward again. So as you inhale, lift your chin. As you exhale, drop your chin. So try to work that together, the breath and the movement. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Good. One more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Keep it chin to chest. Try to imagine that your chest is meeting your chin. So you might feel a little elevation in your torso at that point. And press your hands into your thighs as though you're pushing your torso away from your pelvis and your chin to your chest. So you're gluing that part of your body together and you'll feel tension. It's a muscular action. It's not a stressful tension. It's just muscles working. And then from there, take your right ear to your right shoulder. And notice the stretch. Keeping your shoulders relaxed, both sides, elbows are dangling at your side, close to your body so that you try to stay equal. The shoulders are not going to change. You're not falling off your chair. You're staying level. Come back to center. Take the left ear to the left shoulder. Notice the right stretch on the right side of your neck. And come back to center. And just look up at the ceiling in front of you diagonally because we don't want to crunch the back of our neck, but we want to open our throat and feel the space and stretch in the muscles in the front of our throat. Come back to center. At your own pace, now take your right ear to your right shoulder and then look up at the ceiling and make circles as though you have a pencil on the top of your head and you're circling it around as slowly or quickly as comfortable. You might hear some cracks and pops in your neck. That is okay. Just try to keep your head elevated out of your spine. So you're not pushing it down. You're lifting it up. Another great Analogy I use is pretending that you have a string coming out of the crown of your head and it's just lifting up towards the ceiling out through the roof or the sky and it's way up high. Reverse the direction, keeping your head lifted, your neck, which results in every other part of your body from your pelvis lifting up as though it's floating in space. When you get back to center, drop your chin and then lift, lift back up to shoulder height. Very good. From here, we're going to take a breath with our arms coming out to the side and leave them long. This is where we start to get energized, building a little heat, because we can stretch and twist all we want, but we also want to create some heat and energy to get our circulation flowing, which is also another benefit.
show you a bit, of course. So take your palms and flip them up to the ceiling so they're facing up. And inhale up your arms together so your palms are meeting each other at the top of your head. Take a deep breath in and raise your shoulders really high to your ears. And as you exhale, just relax your shoulders back down your back area. The scapula are just draping down your back. Those are those triangular bones. And then lift again, inhale. So we're lifting and lengthening. Exhale, deepen, shoulders relax. Notice the scapula drawing back down the back side of your body. One more time, inhale. Exhale, leave your arms up and you may start to feel a little more tension in the muscles of the arms that are working. Take your right hand and grab your left wrist. So this is to help you assist. This is to give you a little bit more support. Inhale, and as though you can lift your torso out of your pelvis, so high, so long, take it over to your right side and drape it over, pressing your left foot into the floor, into the floor, into the floor, and stretching your left side body over to the right wall, as though those left fingertips could touch the wall, and they're alive, and they're strong, and they're energetic. So you feel the length all the way from your foot, up your leg, through your left side body, out your arms and shoulders to the fingertips. Take a deep breath, stay here. Reach a little bit deeper if you can, pressing down that left hip into the chair. So you feel that opposition, one against the other is the way we create some length and strength as well. But the length of our muscles, the more pliable they are, the happier they are. Take a deep breath in as you come back to center, palm, palms facing each other, releasing the hand from the wrist. Take the left hand and grab the right wrist. Inhale, lift. Drape it over to the left side. Imagery is a wonderful way to create your movement and imagine a waterfall or a rainbow. So pressing down in the right foot, lifting up the right side. And perhaps you're noticing if your right elbow is in line with your right ear, that will open up your right side body and the front of your body more. So if you're like down here, this is not where you're gonna get some length and stretch. If it's too much, just raise it enough that you don't feel any kind of a negative tension, but draping it over to the side is your action. Take a deep breath in, come back to center, press your palms together, and keep pressing them together as you lower your arms in front of your forehead, in front of your nose, your mouth, all the way down to your chest and push your arms together to create resistance and create some power. Press them together. You can close your eyes again and notice how it feels. This is not about how it looks, it's more about how it feels. So one more deep breath in. As you exhale, open those arms again back to where we came from and flip the palms up again. Raise your arms up, this time overhead, palms face together, but interlace your fingers, flip your hands so your palms are facing up towards the ceiling, lift, and then sit down in your chair as you try to separate your palms and your bottom, one apart from each other. You can wiggle, wiggle up a little bit and feel the stretch on each side. It might feel really good. If you notice your shoulders coming with you, relax them. Just relax your shoulders. You don't want tension there. So inhale, lift. Exhale, maybe bring your shoulders back or your arms a little bit farther in your shoulder sockets till it feels like you're stretching, not hurting, stretching. So we're gonna take an inhale, lift, and this time bring your hands down to shoulder height and curve your lower back, so you curve it and dome it. Inhale, lift it up. This is something like a cat cow in a chair. Press your heart forward and your arms back. And then exhale, starting from the lower spine, curving around to the upper back neck, maybe glancing down at your belly button. Imagine your belly button coming to your spine, like it's snapping there. So inhale, lift. We want to keep that connection because then our core will stay strong. Exhale, think about your curving your back, but also your belly button meeting your spine. Take a snap. One more time. Inhale. 
Exhale. You may start getting a little warmer. That's a good sign. And come back to shoulder height. And bring your palms together again towards your chest. And let's take three breaths in. So you're going to push your hands forward together. And maybe take your torso with you. And then inhale up. And come back to center. That's one breath. Push your hands forward. Take your torso with you. Pull your arms up above your head. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Now from here, take your right arm across your chest. Take your left arm out to the side and then hook it underneath above your elbow or below your elbow, but not on your elbow. We don't want to take our movement on our joints. That's not a safe way to move. So we're going to hook it under as an assist again and lift up as you inhale. Exhale, try to pull the right arm around from the middle of your spine, the back part of your body, all the way around your shoulder, out your arms and fingertips as though you could touch the side wall. And the other arm is used to lift to keep it supported so you can create more length and stretch and have that ability to support it with your other arm. So we're just helping ourselves. Take one more breath in. Exhale. Now with this movement, use that left arm to lift up the right arm. Take it right behind as you grab your upper arm with your left hand and take your right hand behind your head and try to reach your back left shoulder. So now we're going to do an opening of our tricep area, upper arm, and you're going to feel a stretch and lengthening. And lift up as you inhale, and then press your head against the inside of your upper right arm so you feel again that resistance. And feel the stretch and notice your right fingertips. Every time you exhale, can you crawl them a little bit farther down your back? We'll get to a strap and see how we can use more assist later. But right now, inhale, lift. Maybe take your left hand and crawl it up your right elbow a little bit more, your right upper arm. And then try to get those right fingertips down the back. So you're opening up the front of your shoulder and your chest. There might be some tingling going on as well. Everything is waking up. One more big breath in. Exhale. Now slowly release your left hand first and straighten your right arm up. And then just scrape it down like it's waving through clouds. And then move your fingers and then bring your arms up and through your center again. Take your left hand across your body. Hook the right arm underneath. Notice the length from the center of your back all the way around your front, out your fingertips, breathing here. One more breath. And then take that left arm up and behind your head, using your right hand to assist, grab the opposite shoulder behind you, so that would be your right shoulder. And lengthen the side body, the tricep. Breathing here, head against the arm, arm against the head, feel the resistance. Two more breaths. One more breath. Notice the length and the release. Breathe, drop the right hand. Lift the left arm up, drape it down, gently, 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 waving your hand. Take a deep breath in, arms come out to the side, and then bring your hands back to center and let rest them on your thighs. Take your torso to the right side, and I want you to stir your torso like it's a spoon in a pot of soup or a pot of your favorite dish. And notice the release in your hip joints. Notice the feeling that you have when you move your torso around your pelvis. It should be a good feeling. If it hurts, then don't go so deep. But take it to your degree of comfort and then go the other direction. And notice the release. 
This is a really nice thing to do if you're sitting for a long time. It's very helpful. Sit up straight now and just take your body now from side to side. So this is another way to just release and notice if your foot comes up, you can bring your bottom of your foot to the ball of your feet and lifting your heels each time. That's another way to stretch your feet. And then rest both feet down, come back to center, grab your block and put it between your legs. Move up to the edge of your chair. So we're going to activate our inner thighs and use the heels of your hands to do cat cow. We're going to massage our back, our spine, through cat cow movements. So as you bring the heels of your hands back along your elbows or along your side body, you're going to push your chest forward and glance up at the ceiling. So you're squeezing your back muscles and your shoulder blades together. And then you're going to push your heels of your hands forward and curve your back and come back to that place we were before where you look at your belly button and curve your back, head down. Inhale, pull back. Exhale, push forward. So we're going to pull back. That would be cow. We're going to push forward. That would be cat. Curving. One more time. Pull back. You're massaging your spine, opening up your heart, your chest. And curve in your lower back. And then come back to center. Close your eyes one more time again to feel the block and the strength you have and squeeze your legs so hard like you could change the shape of your block. And then release, but don't release the block. Squeeze again. Release. One more time. Squeeze. Release. Take the block in your hand. Put it aside for a moment. And put your left foot in the middle of your chair and lift your right knee up and take your hands around the front of your shin and just move your leg, your right side, back and forth. In the hip joint, you can make little circles if you'd like, or you can just open and close a door. But any action that just loosens up and makes you feel your hip, your leg and your hip joint. And from here, lift it up a little higher and rest it on top of your left leg, if you can. If you can't, you can stretch your leg out and just rest it on top of your ankle, the front of your ankle. But if you want to do the whole movement with us, it's figure four. And my right foot is on my left thigh. And my right knee is draped open, and I'm sitting up nice and tall. Again, if you want to scooch back in your chair for support, you may do that again. You can go there. And just let your right hip fall open. Imagine you have a waterfall coming off of your right knee. Every time you exhale, the water is just spilling out and it will relax your hip joint. Send the breath to that place. Again, if you prefer to close your eyes, you can do that or leave them open, but just notice the sensation. You can take your right arm and press it on the inside of your thigh, your inner thigh. It gives it a little more Assistance to open up a little deeper, perhaps. One more breath. Exhale. From here, take your right leg across as though you're going to have a nice conversation and a chit chat. And cross your legs. Put your hands on the chair. And then left leg comes out. And you're going to squeeze the top of your legs together. This is the bottom of an eagle pose. If we're standing, we can balance but we're not, we're sitting in a chair, so we can squeeze those thighs together and we bring our arms out to the side. Cross your right arm under your left. If you just want to make a V with your arms, that is enough. If you want to give yourself a hug, that feels really good, that's enough. If you want to bind your arms, you just keep twisting them around until you can have your palms meet each other and you squeeze your arms together and squeeze your lower arms together and you lift your elbows and you sit up nice and tall but keep squeezing those inner thighs sometimes you can wrap your right foot around the back of your leg and both sides will be super different so it just depends on your degree of flexibility and where you're comfortable so inhale lift your elbows exhale push your hands away but sit up tall and stay there one more time inhale exhale so you can play with this unwind your arms the 
same way they came from. And put your hands on the chair so you can lift your right leg back off. And here's the point where we go back and forth because it feels really good to open it up because it's been stretched. And then come back to center. Press both feet into the floor. Take your hands around your left shin. Lift it up and go back and forth around in circles just to loosen up that left hip joint. Breathe through the movement and then lift it up and lay it on top of the right thigh if possible or below. And once again, just let it rest there. Make sure your right foot is planted on the floor straight forward. We call that our true north. So everything is lined up on top of each other, which is a safe way to move because our joints are meant to move in synchronicity. Our bodies are amazing machines. Remember, your breath is a tool, but breathing is your action. Think of a waterfall coming off your left kneecap. So as you inhale, lift your torso. As you exhale, send the breath to the hip joint. Let it fall out of the kneecap. Relax into the movement, but stay active. Two more breaths. Inhale deeply, fill up. Exhale, belly to spine. Bring the leg up and over the right leg this time, so left over right. Squeeze your thighs together, nice and tight. If you can also squeeze your shins, that's extra. That's good. Open your arms to the side, and then your left arm comes underneath your right arm to your degree of binding. You choose what's right for you. I'm going into eagle, full eagle pose. And we lift our elbows as we inhale, and we press our hands away as we exhale. So keep the length of the last time. Lift, exhale. Two more times. Squeeze those thighs. Good job. Last time. Open your arms, put your hands on the chair, lift your left leg up and put it down. This time take your torso around again, so the big circle. This should feel really good. It is my favorite pose, favorite asana. Go back the other way, and then come to center. A little twisting, so open up your arms. Bring your left arm across your body to the side of your right side of your chair. And then take your right hand and put it behind your chair if you can, or move up on your chair, whichever you prefer, and press your right hand into the back of the chair as though it's a second spine. So it gives you some extra support. So your degree of twisting because we're all flexible differently. So inhale, keep your feet forward, your hips forward, your knees forward, lift your torso. Exhale, look over your right shoulder and let your shoulders follow you. The objective is to have your shoulders be parallel with the side wall. So you're pulling your right shoulder back and pushing your left shoulder forward, and you're twisting your torso from your pelvis. And it's as though you're a wet washcloth, wringing yourself out, or a piece of taffy that you've made your delicious flavor. So you decide what image works for you, but inhale, lift. Exhale, look a little farther behind you. Two more times. Inhale, lift. Staying there and then taking it a little deeper. So every time you exhale, you also have the opportunity to go deeper into a pose or a place. So it's a movement. It's not just a finite area. It's a movement. And then slowly come back to center. Both hands on your legs, again your thighs, and go back and forth, just to release a little bit. Arms come out to the side again. Take your right hand across your body and put it on the outside of your left thigh or the chair. Just enough to feel that twist to begin. Take the left hand around the back or down behind you. 
push you up a little stronger and taller. Inhale, lift. Exhale, look over your left shoulder this time. Trying to get your shoulders parallel with the wall to your left side. And breathe as you inhale and expand. Deepen as you exhale and deepen the twist. Inhale. Exhale. Two more times. Exhale. One more time. Keep this one yet. Really notice that twist. Gently come back to center. Sit back in your chair. Take your strap. Just a little bit more shoulder action and a little more lower body action. And we're going to be in great shape. <laughs> so inhale. I'm sorry. Pull the strap apart farther than shoulder distance. So it's as though your arms are making a V. Never, never, never lock your joints. Never, never, never. Strength, resistance, pulling apart the strap, yes. Locking your elbows, no. So just notice that you have enough bend in your elbows that you're not locking them, but you're pulling the strap apart so you're going to tear it open. So when you do that, don't change your resistance. Keep it with you as you inhale the strap with your arms up above your head and behind you if possible, which might result in the strap space being used more, so you just pull your arms out a little farther, and then come back up. As you inhale up, ooh, it's even harder because it's more width. Exhale to shoulder height. Inhale what's up. So this is a big muscular shoulder rotation, and that's a good thing because we're warmed up now, so we have the opportunity to do this movement. One more time. Lift it up. Exhale behind. One more time to lift up to get back to shoulder height. Ooh, our arms feel that one. Bring it together. Drop the strap for a minute and give yourself a hug. Right hand on top of left. Drop your chin. Just give yourself some love and relaxation for a minute. One breath. Mini Shavasana. Open your arms. Put the other arm on top of the arm that you had before, so left arm on top of right. One more breath. Hands on your thighs. Grab the strap. We have one more thing. I'm losing my voice. <coughs> Excuse me. Grab the strap. Put it underneath the ball of your right foot. And with our breath, we're going to lift and extend and bend and lower. So I will demonstrate this one time. Inhale, lift. Push your heel forward without locking your knee. Extend. Inhale, flex. Exhale back to the floor. So it's very much movement and breath. So let's all try that together. With our strap holding us to support us, giving us more space and a little more flexibility, perhaps. So it's your assistant. Lift your right leg up. Inhale. Exhale. Push the right heel forward, really flexing that foot. Inhale. Bring it back. Squeeze it into your thigh. Exhale. Lower. We're going to do it five times. So that was one. This is two. Extend. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, lift. Exhale, extend. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. This is four. Inhale, lift. Exhale, extend. Feel the back side of your leg. Inhale, maybe pull it up a little bit more. Exhale, down one last time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lengthen. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lengthen. Very good. Take that strap out from under that foot and put it around the left foot. You can do it without the strap if you want. It just takes a little more muscle action and hip joint. So your call, but this just gives you a little more space to move a little deeper sometimes. So let's begin with lifting. Inhale, left foot. Exhale, extend. Inhale, lift. Sitting up tall. Exhale, down. Lift. Push it through, pull it back, exhale down. 
Inhale, lift. Exhale, lengthen. Inhale, down. This is number four. Inhale, lengthen. Come back. Exhale, last time. Lift, lengthen. Inhale, and down. From here, come back to center. Maybe go back and forth in your chair. Again, you can do this practice for as long or short as you want. You can take pieces of it. You can go shorter amounts of holding. But it's your time. These are just some examples to offer. And from here, just settle into the space that you're in your chair. Put your feet on the floor. Lift your spine long and tall. And notice how you feel. Bring your eyes to touch and close if you'd like. This is our little mini Shavasana in our chair. You can come to the back of your chair. Rest your back against the back of the chair and keep your body close together. And just breathe and inventory your body from bottom to top, top to bottom, side to side, front to back. And just give yourself some grace and notice how you feel. Breathing here. Start to bring your awareness back into the space, wiggle your fingers, maybe move your feet around a little bit back and forth, press to the ball of your feet, sit up taller, and then bring your hands to heart center. And we honor each other at the end of our class as we come together in community to practice and be together for this time. And I'm grateful to all of you and for the time you spent together with me. So I bring my hands between my eyebrows to my forehead, and we bow our head in honor of each other and community, and I say, namaste. Thank you.